Hello and welcome to Adobe Live. Thank you so much for tuning in today and joining us for the first day of our Adobe Express How to Build Your Personal Brand Bootcamp this week. I'm so excited to be here. Um, if we haven't met yet, I am Jordan Danae Ellis. I'm a community manager for Adobe Express, so you may have seen me hanging out in our Adobe Express Insiders Facebook group. I am also all over the internet um, at Jordan Danae Ellis. So if you're not watching this live and you have any questions at all about Adobe Express, feel free to slide into my DMs or ask me anything at all you possibly want to know about Adobe Express. And if you haven't heard of that, we are going to dive into that today. So don't worry. Um, and thank you everyone so much for hanging out in the chat. I see Wade and Gareth and Tim. Um, thank you so much. I'm going to out myself a little bit. This is my first live stream by myself. So feel free chat to ask me any questions and uh, keep me company. <laughs> um, and with that, I think ready to dive in to Adobe Express. So like I said, today and this week, we're going to be talking about using Adobe Express to build your personal brand. Lots of times that, well, at least in a lot of my other live streams, if you've seen, I do a Get Social stream with Andy Lambert every other week where we talk about using Adobe Express to create social media content and to like build up your brand make your um, make your workflow easier with Express. So there is a lot that you can do for a brand or business. Um, I actually, my background is that I have 13 years of entrepreneurial experience on top of now working at Adobe Express. So I love using this as like the quick and easy tool for folks who maybe do not know a lot about design. Um, I actually am not a designer at all. I didn't go to art school. I think the last art class I took was like sophomore year of high school. So if anyone else is in that boat, like I am a testament to Adobe Express is something that really anyone can use without, you know, any sort of, uh, design background. Um, I'm actually curious in the chat, how many folks watching have a design background or if you're all closer to me and figuring things out as we go. Um, but yes, so this is the homepage of Adobe Express, and I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can use this platform either by itself, or if you do use the Pro Tools, you can streamline your workflow a little bit with Adobe Express, which is great. This is the homepage. I'll show you super quickly. If you are curious about more of like a deep dive into the platform and everything it can do, there are tons of resources on the Adobe Express YouTube channel. Also, I've started making some little tutorial videos about Adobe Express, so feel free to check either of those out. Um, and I'll just do like a very quick, basic overview of the homepage. This is where you'll go if you land on express.adobe.com. There is also a mobile app, so you can use it on your tablet or your phone. And there's a free version which you can use, all you need is an Adobe ID, which is free to sign in, or there's a premium version that has a few extra features that we'll talk about. So if you have an Adobe Express all apps plan or some of the single apps plans, you may have Adobe Express premium included. So feel free to check that out um, or you can use it for free or you can subscribe. So whatever feels like it works for you. Um, and thanks everyone for, Responding in the chat. So Barbara has been designing for 19 years. That's amazing. Oliver's figuring it out as I go is my life. Solid same. Um, some folks use Pro Tools. Shell has no real design background, but likes to make stuff up and play on Illustrator and Fresco. Um, yeah, honestly, like I'll show you some of my favorite ways to play around with Adobe Express, but I love that people are kind of figuring things out. So if we scroll down, one of my favorite things is that all of the templates in Adobe Express are created by Adobe designers. So like, they're really good. Um, like I said, as a non-designer myself, I love that I can get so much inspiration just by scrolling templates. Something cool that I kind of forget to lean into is that on the homepage, there's something called quick actions. These are like, Things that you can quickly and easily do that you might not be in a project for, they're like one button, 
super, super fast things. Like if you just want to remove a background on a photo or if you want to create a QR code. So I recommend taking a look at the quick actions and just kind of keeping them in the back of your mind of like what kinds of things you can do. So here you can resize image. They're, they're set up by, if you're looking at video, if you want to make a QR code, you can like edit PDFs, merge them, that sort of thing. But I recommend checking out the quick actions because they make life a lot easier. Okay. The template section is something that I like to use this as sort of, I know some people use like Pinterest as inspiration or just getting, getting a look at new designs. Um, kind of like, sometimes I look at what other templates are to think about the types of projects I can make on Adobe Express. So I've gotten ideas for like different ways to use this in my life and business just by scrolling. Um, and like, you can see the new things that are coming, which is cool. So a lot of the homepage, like I said, that's basically, that's basically it. It's nice and easy on the side. You can look at your old projects. You can go into brands, which we're going to do next. And then you can also check out libraries, which we'll talk about later in this video and scheduler, which is my personal favorite. Okay. Don't see any questions yet. Feel free again to drop them. Or like I said, if you're not watching live and you have questions for me at any point in life, feel free to ping me about Adobe express things. Um, I try to either know the answer to everything or find them for you. So this week, like I said, we're going to be talking about using Adobe express for your personal brand. Branding is a whole thing. Like it is definitely an entire career path. There are agencies, there are freelancers. You can go deep, deep, deep into branding. Lots of folks probably think about this for companies or businesses, a brand, which like, I am not going to be able to like give you a full deep dive into what branding is, but essentially it's like the look and feel of a company, a group, a person. And so branding a lot of times is like the logo, the color palette, the font, the type of vocabulary, like the, the mood, um, kind of like the personality of a brand or company and how you present it so that it's recognizable to the rest of the world. So for personal brands, that can mean a whole range of things. It can be something pretty not serious, but like some folks basically turn their personal brand into a little business. So if you, or a giant business, if you're an influencer or a blogger, YouTuber, Twitch streamer, mm, so many different things that you could have a personal brand that you present yourself to the world. We are going to talk about that too, but I also think it's kind of fun to talk about personal brands that are like not that serious. <laughs> They're just for fun. Um, maybe you don't have a logo. Maybe your personal brand is just like your favorite colors and the types of emojis or icons that you like to use. So we'll talk a little bit about both. Um, but first let's set it up in the brand section, which is right here from the Adobe Express homepage. I believe this is a premium feature. So if you're on the free version, you may not have access to this. You can upgrade if you would like to. One of my favorite things about Adobe Express is that there isn't a limit to the number of brands that you can set up. So here I run a lot of businesses. Some of these are don't exist anymore. Um, I used to do social media freelance. And so one of my favorite ways to use Adobe Express was to set up brands for my clients. And then I have like, I'll click into this, have their logos on the ready, have their colors, have their fonts, which I'll show you how that makes projects so much easier. So these are some of my clients or some of my own brands, and this is using it for business, but we're going to use it just for ourselves. So I'll go ahead and hit create a brand. And there are lots of options here, which I think is fun. So you can upload a logo. If you don't have a logo, that is totally cool. You can skip this step which is nice if you just want to do colors and fonts, because these are the three things that make up the Adobe Express brand kit. There is also something really fun. If we have time at the end, we can dive into it. Otherwise it's really self-explanatory. There's an Adobe Express free logo maker. So you can find this by going to adobe.com slash express slash create slash logo, or you can do what I did, which is just Google 
Adobe Express logo maker. Um, and you can make a logo for free. It is literally like step by step, just going through and choosing your name, maybe a tagline, the types of colors you like. So this is super, super easy. Um, we're not going to go through that right now because you don't have to have a logo for your personal brand if you want. You also definitely can though. I don't know if folks know Katrina Tarijos, our Adobe Express evangelist, but she has done videos on her personal brand, which she has a full brand kit for herself. She streams and posts on social. So she has like a really cohesive um, entire set for herself, which is nice. So all of her Instagram posts and all of her, you know, Facebook events and all of her Twitch streams have a really cohesive look, which is beautiful. I'm going to do something that is, it's not really a logo, but if you're using this personal brand for like purely personal, just fun, you can also just upload like images that you like that you want to use a lot. So this is also where using something that's created in Photoshop or Illustrator where you can bring it into Adobe Express. So I have these really cute like hand lettered illustrations that are done in Illustrator and I'm bringing them in here now. So this isn't like a logo. It's just uh, an emoji that I like using a in a lot of my projects. So this is my like little way to keep it nice and handy. So you can do that too if there is like some sort of graphic that you want to pull in a lot of your projects, this is a way to keep track of it. Picking your color is, I think, my favorite part. There are, right now in the base setup, you choose one and then you can edit and put in a whole palette. I think this is my favorite part of thinking about branding. Like I said, I did not go to art school. I am not a designer. I'm sure lots of folks in the chat have like a lot more information about color theory than I do, but I just really like it. I think colors are really fun and you can play with them without any sort of design background. So I'm going to show you some of my favorite ways to pick color palettes, and then you can choose what you would like to do for yourself, or you can literally just pick your favorite color. That's a completely fine way to do this too. If you were setting it up for a brand, there are lots of other, th other things to consider, but because we're doing this for our personal brands, it can be whatever we want, which is very fun. So one of my favorite ways to get color inspiration is to scroll Behance. I like going to the top and searching color palette, which I literally always spell with either the wrong number of L's or T's. I think this is right. So you can scroll projects here and see some color palettes that have already been made, which is really cool. Like over here, if you want more of like a muted color palette, this is obviously very bold. And I can look at color palettes for days. Like back in my Tumblr days, most of my feed was color palettes. You can also look on Tumblr, Pinterest, so many places. Uma Coin is saying, got the theory, but still hard to pick colors sometimes. Yeah, that's 100% true. Like, it's really fun to look at, but sometimes it is hard to decide. This is like, this is like my favorite. I'm really into teals, um, but I've also been like feeling greens and yellows lately. You can do something really muted. So it really depends on what you want to use this for, but I love scrolling Behance for inspiration. I also have been posting my own color palettes, which I'll show you how I make those on my Behance, which is just my name at Jordan Danae Ellis, if you want to check those out. So that is one option. Another option is to go to Adobe Color, which is free. You can just, again, search Adobe Color or head to color.adobe.com. You'll land in a place like this which this is the homepage. It might look kind of overwhelming depending on if you've seen something like this before, but I like hitting the explore and trends. So if we hit trends, we can see different types of, I mean, literally trending color palettes, but this is nice to just kind of see like what is happening um, in the rest of the world, especially if you're not necessarily up on the latest trends. I'm going to be honest, I'm not a huge trend follower, which I probably shouldn't like out myself as someone who uh, is supposed to keep up with all that stuff, but I really don't. And I think, you know, 
colors obviously there are like movements but you can really choose whatever you want <clears throat> sean i wish we could get color palettes from cc libraries and express so i'll show you one of the like tricks i use for now that is definitely something that we've heard a lot so i hope that there are other options um coming in the future but yes so this is one option you can also hit explore which is very similar it just feels um i don't know it's it's a really similar option just this is like exploring i guess everything not necessarily what is in the moment trending and you can search too so the examples that we're getting here are things like ocean wine moonlight so you can search like spring if you can't tell i am dying to get out of winter so these are like bright and happy but even in searching spring like you can see some of these feel sort of like pastel -y easter but then we have like you know like woodland spring we have some like really bold and bright colors yeah adding sean adding the jpeg palette will work definitely and you can also like scroll down a little bit i'm really feeling this one like you can click in here and then if you just hover over the colors it will copy the codes which is really nice and easy so you can like i'll copy this and bring it in to here and paste it whoops and then we have that color i'll show you one more of my favorite ways to pull color palettes if i go open oh we'll have to go back into brand um i love pulling images from adobe stock so actually i'm just going to start a new project i'll start a square Adobe stock is one of the like secret superpowers of Adobe Express that not everyone knows about. So if you don't know about it, Adobe stock is integrated with Adobe Express. So if you use the free account, you have access to a free library, which is still pretty huge. And if you have the premium access, you have, I used to know the number, I think it's like over 160 million Adobe stock images that you can use in any of your Adobe Express projects without having to do like external um what is it called licensing i can't remember what it's called when you choose stock photos but they're just in here for you which is great i don't know what it's called because i never do it because i only use stock photos in adobe express so we'll check out the free photos just to see like what kinds of things we have but i like looking for for photos where like for this project, we're pulling out colors. So the photo and what it looks like and what the content is doesn't matter as much as what the color palette is. So like I'm leaning towards this, like I said, I'm really into teals and greens. So that's feeling really good to me. We can scroll down and this is like deeper colors. This is really fun. The blues with a pop of red is cool. And I think it's really interesting to look at photos through the lens of color too, because I tend not to, right? Like I usually look at photos for the content and what the photo is, but it's really, it's kind of like an interesting new way to look at things where like, this is very, like that feels very fall to me. Um, ooh, this, this one I'm really feeling. And this one too, with all the different buildings. So actually, if you can't tell, like I'm picking things that have a lot of teals and yellows. Maybe I'll pull in this one. And this is how I personally use Adobe Stock to pull color palettes. So you can do it a couple different ways. You can add, like you can just, um, actually let's do this. Let's add some shapes. So I'm going to do circle and just add a basic circle down here. Sorry, reading the chat um, <laughs> called licensing. Great, thank you, Oliver. We have some folks who have been, uh, lots of people seem to not have like a, 
a professional design background, but have been doing it for a long time. So that is giving me hope. <laughs> I love hearing that. Um, okay. So this is an Adobe Express project. We are just going to duplicate this with the duplicate button. Let's do like four. Can I fit four? Let's see if I really push it. If not, then we'll do three. Yeah. Perfect. So looking at this, the colors that I want to choose are like the mustard, the teal, and then maybe like one of the whites and one of the grays, or maybe the dark purple to have it be, I like doing a few darks and a, like a few dark colors, a few light colors. Um, okay. So the way we're going to pull this is clicking on one of these shapes, hitting this right here. Oops. Sorry, you can just do the border too, but we want to do, we want to fill it and we're going to hit this color picker right here, this eyedropper. So now we can scroll all over the whole page and see any color we want. It will pull. So let's do like this, like dark gray purple. I'm going to turn off the border or let's do maybe let's do yeah let's turn it off and so now i have this color pulled and i can go right here copy the code the same way as i did in behance and i have this right here so i'm gonna go um back to my brand which i accidentally left good thing they're super easy to set up create a brand i'm going to add my little smiley face back and then choose a color. I will type in the code for the purple we just picked and I'll pull out the other colors now. So let's see, we'll do this yellow and even like, I mean, this is kind of obvious, but even like the shadows are a different color that's then, you know, the more sunlit areas, you can really pick what you want. Let's see, let's do this teal. And then let's have this last one be lighter to have a little bit of a range. Maybe this like grayish, that's a little darker than I want. Let's do a little lighter. Yeah, 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 I don't know. What do you think? Rose says such good colors. Thanks, Rose. Let me know what you all think. The other really nice thing, which I did mention already, but there is no limit to the number of brands that you can set up in Adobe Express. So for example, I'm setting this up as just like a personal brand kind of favorite colors. There are so many ways that you could use this. So you could set up like, I am a really big nerd. If you've seen any of my other streams or follow me on social, that is not a well-hidden secret, not a secret at all. So I like throwing extravagant themed parties. <clears throat> and when I do that, I like to really go all out. So I did like a murder mystery party last year. I made invitations that I like digitally sent out to everyone. And then also made like menus that we printed out and place cards that we printed out. And I set up a brand for it because I wanted them all to have the same look, use the same colors, have the same fonts. So you could set up a brand for like a big birthday you have coming up um, for a wedding. If you were doing like a DIY wedding and wanted your invitations and your, you know, thank you cards and everything to have a cohesive brand look, that is a really fun way that you can do this. And you can, you can also do it just for fun. So like, if you just want a look for your, you know, Instagram and you want like a brand of the year or maybe a different color palette for all the seasons, you could set up a spring, summer, fall, winter brand. You can do all kinds of things depending on what you are using, which is really fun. Matthias loves the color palette. Carrie said, love the teal color. Awesome. Okay, great. So we'll go back to the rest of the colors in a second. But the last part of this is choosing your font, which is generally one of the harder things for me. Thankfully, there are tons of great resources for choosing fonts. Adobe Fonts is a really great one. Um, 
again, you can just go to, you can search Adobe fonts, fonts fonts.adobe.com. And similar, like there's kind of a theme here, but a lot of the homepages I think are great to just like scroll for inspiration. So this is what the homepage is today. You can scroll down and see lots of like trending type, which is cool. Like I'm really like this. You can think about the types of projects that you want to use, but just to show, I'm going to click on this one because I think it's very fun. And then you can find out more about the font. So you can see what it's designed by, but this is the part I really like. You can see it in all of the different weights, I think is what this is called. Um, so like italic, medium, and this is really fun too. You can change out the sample text. So yeah, wait, the stream will now be four and a half hours long. Um, choosing a font, thankfully, like it definitely could take that long. I like doing the really quick and easy part, which I'll show you in a second, but it's really nice on Adobe fonts. You can check out the sample text. So for example, you can type in whatever you want. So like, say I'm using this to write my name a lot like this is going to be like that's what i'm going to use it for it'll be for like you know birthday invitations or party things like that i can type in my name to see what it looks like or you know say it was for your company you can type in your brand you know your company name so now i can see Obviously, it's nice to be able to like look at it with the sample text, but I think this is really great because I am not great at visualizing what's not right in front of me. So just being able to see this like this, um, I think is really helpful to choose like a word or phrase that you is the main thing you want to focus on. So you can like we have been saying in the chat, you can look at Adobe fonts or just fonts in general for days. You can scroll Pinterest. You can look at Behance. There are so many ways that you can look into cool fonts. I am not going to do that. And also because this is just for fun, like to me, that is uh, a project I don't have time for. So there is <clears throat> a really, really quick way to do this. You can add your own fonts, which is especially helpful if this is for a brand project. There's a good chance that you have like a specific font that you need to use, um, that you, you know, have the rights for and can upload, but there are also some pre-built or like pre-built in fonts. So I'm going to pick one of these to make my life super easy. They're kind of grouped by like vibe. Um, I'm going to be honest that this aesthetic is like what I have lived off of for the past 10 years. And then I learned from like an Instagram reel that, I mean, I am a millennial, so I guess I should just lean into that. But apparently, um, serifs are what the youth are using these days. So I've been playing around with more of these types of fonts to just, you know, be a little cooler, I guess. So I'll go ahead and choose this one is fun. And the nice thing is when you have all this in your brand kit, you can see some like samples of what this would look like. Honestly, I think this looks really good. Like I am incredibly happy with how this has turned out. And then the that's it. So we're going to hit next. Oh, name our brand. Um, that's just my company is my name. So let's just do this really innovative name and see what this looks like. So on the next page, we can add more colors than just the one you can. Okay. So we have this brand that we already set up. I'm going to go back to see all of our brands it should be here unless I just didn't save it. Okay, here we go. So now I have Jordan's brand right here. I can hit manage. And now I can add more logos. So it'll give me like a default logo here, um, which is just the name, which is nice. I can add more if I want. So I have like this little ghosty illustrator design that I'll add in. Um, so you can add as many of those as you want. 
You can also add more fonts. I like that it pairs one with for you, I think, unless this is just the default body. I'm not sure, but you do get two, which is nice. You have like a heading font and a body font. And then here in the adding more colors part is where we can pull in the rest of these. So I'm gonna go back and copy paste these colors here. And Sean, like we were saying, you can do this from an Adobe stock, or sorry, an Adobe color palette too. I'm just choosing to do it from here. So it's a tiny bit of manual work, but like we're gonna see, it's gonna take literally like five seconds. So that is fine with me, but maybe we'll see more integration someday. And there we go. That is all set up. You can add as many as you want. I'm gonna stick with these. And my whole brand kit is set up. A really nice feature that I think is great is that you can invite people. So this would be really helpful, especially for a brand if you have like a team or a partner, but it can be fun even for personal projects too. Like I like doing really collaborative things. So, you know, if I throw a party, sometimes I throw it with other people and I want them to be able to have access to things. So you can just type in someone's email, hit invite to view. They will get an invitation um, to join your brand. You can also just copy the link and then you can text or email that to them, which is great and nice and easy. So then down here, this is mostly for Adobe Express pages, but you can choose a theme. And so you can see how it would show up if you do make an Adobe Express page, it will pull in everything from this brand, which is great. And I think with that, the brand is set up. That is like half of what we need. And now we can pull this into our projects. Um, oh, people in the chat are talking about brushes too. Yeah. Fonts and brushes are such a nice thing to have a huge stockpile of great inspiration for. Okay. So we have the brand. How do we use this? That is our next, uh, that is what we're doing next. So libraries is another really fun way to use Adobe Express for your personal brand. You can use it again. I tend to use this for business more than anything else. So like I have a library for all of the hand lettered files that I use for my, one of my side businesses. So some of these are similar. There's my little ghosty. Um, and these libraries sync across creative cloud too, which is great. If you have a library of like, that is a library that I made of illustrator files, but a way that I really like using libraries is as sort of like saving my favorites to make things easier. So for example, we were working with nonprofits because Adobe Express has a free option for nonprofits. If anyone watching um, works for a nonprofit, you can check that out. But I was doing like a project. And so these are some of my favorite nonprofit templates and they're all here. It's kind of like using it as a favorites or like come back to later because I try to keep as many things not in my brain as possible. I don't know if other folks have that where like there is so much happening in there that as much as I can save externally to not be like, okay, so I found this template and I searched, you know, this keyword and then I scroll down this far. Like I have a hard time finding templates again. So I like saving them into favorites. So for example, I didn't add many in here yet, but I'm really into digital collages. So these are some of my favorite templates that I've seen. And that's just a nice way to like know where they are. Um, one of the other big perks of Adobe Express is that you don't have to start from scratch or start from a blank page. And so this is, you can obviously just go to the homepage and choose a template, but it's even nicer to have some templates that you already know that you love. So this is a folder that I started of templates that I am really into, and then I'll show you how to add more. Well, if you have already been using Adobe Express and have some favorite projects, this is a really nice and easy way you can hit add template. And then these are all of my past projects. <laughs> I forgot um, to clean this out. So, you know, I just sometimes make collages of some of my favorite celebrities. 
and also like my podcast and also some demo things. Um, so if I scroll down, like this is my birthday invitation. You're literally seeing my personal Adobe Express libraries. But for example, I think this is a really fun template that I don't think is already in the library. So I can just hit select project. I can name it whatever I want. Um, and you can name it something that like means something to you. So like, I'll just say holographic sales and save it as a template. And now this will be here in my library. And that's really easy. It's just the add template button. So if you have projects that you've already started making and you want to like put them into a collection so that they're easy to find, that is one of my favorite ways to do it. You can also add new templates. So I'm going to go back to the home page and I could just scroll. I really like checking out the templates for you or like the popular templates because these change out a lot. Actually, you know what? Let's just do that. I love, I love these. And the great thing about templates, I think later on this week, we're talking about choosing templates because it's a whole process and there are like so many tips and tricks. The thing that's great about it though, is that templates are sort of like a backbone. So for example, if you don't have a business, so you wouldn't need like a sales Instagram story, but you happen to like the way this is laid out, you can just delete all of the sales, change up the images. And this could be like an Instagram story of, you know, your weekend or something. So that's one of the things that's really great about templates. The it's like, the baseline of what you can choose from, but you can swap out all of the content. So let's go back into, maybe it was under flyers. I feel like I saw a cute one that I wanted to play with. Um, let's see. I love this one. I am a huge sucker for like watercolor things. Let's. No, I want something, um, you can also like think about what you want. So I want to use the colors in my brand. So I want to look for something that has a lot of shapes and text because those are the things that I can change the colors of and something that's really photo heavy or like design asset heavy are going to be a little more pre-planned. Oh, these magazine template covers are so fun. Okay. That's actually not what I want. Let's go back. I want to play around with um I feel like I saw a cool one on the home page. I like this one a lot. Um okay, let's do let's start from this one. I think this will work. Let's see. So this is for a risograph printing workshop. Maybe some folks in the chat would straight up like need a flyer or, you know, a post for risograph printing. But the thing that's really nice about it is this, like I said, can be anything. So it's really easy to edit, which we will do in a second. But first, let's save this into our old library, because if we don't want to do this, you know, right now, we don't want to edit this at this moment, but want to save it for later. You can go into share. And then... It will let us create a, it will let us save to our libraries right from here. So we can hit make a template. Let's call this like for a workshop and we can save it to the library. You just have to remember what your library is called. It has the most recent one that you've been on, which is template inspiration. So we are going to save it. And now if the stars align, it should be, oops, it should be in our template library. Yes, yes, yes. We love to see it. Okay. So that is how to add templates into your library. I want to edit maybe, you know what, let's do this one and we'll swap out these smileys for the smiley in our brand. So you can click into any of the templates or start from a new one. And the thing that I love is that your brand is going to be here in the design tab. I believe it starts like open like this when you open a project. 
And if you're not in the right one, this is my brand for all of the things I make for Adobe Express. So this is like a different brand that I have set up. You can hit switch brand and we'll switch to the one we just made. So the thing that's really fun about that is that now if you go into colors, we are not going to edit this. These are all individual checkers. That's amazing. We'll do a couple. Um, but now our brand, which when you hit design, you can see Jordan's brand is here. Now our brand is set. So if we go into, hey, Paul, if we go into logos, our logo is right here. We're going to have to get a little creative with it because it doesn't. Okay, we'll see. We'll have to get creative with it. But if we click on it, it comes in here. So like, say I want to replace this one and I delete this smiley. I'm going to put this here. But like the purple on purple isn't really doing it for me. So now I can swap out this back color. Let's try. Yeah, okay. We can do the gray. So let's do like gray and teal alternating. Cool. Um, the fun thing about using Adobe Express templates is that sometimes you don't know how they're set up until you click in. Um, so if you're not up for like a project of manually swapping out however many checkers this is, um, that's fine. We are not going to do all of it because I want to be invited back to stream again on Adobe Live. And I don't think that's what you all want to watch, but I'll do a couple just so we can see. Um, oh, these are even behind here. I'll just do... A few of these um and then we can also swap out the font for our brand font so when you go into if you click any text box the edit text will open up you can see all of your text options but the great thing is your brand font will be at the top so if you remember this is the one we picked <laughs> thanks um yeah this, like, sometimes you look at it and you're like, it actually, I think the template font here worked a lot better than our brand font, which is something good to know. But there are so many things that you can do here. Like, say we want this to be, you know, even more on brand. We can swap out the, sh the color in the background. So we have grays here. Um, this is just shape, which you can turn on or off to see. Um, hold on. I have to fix these. This we have to, we have to have this looking the right way. Give me one second. So sometimes you'll apply your brand to a template and be like, eh, that is like not better. So you can always go back. Um, and I do think this, I do think the font in this template is, is a lot of fun. So we might switch it back. I'll show you too. There's another really fun perk of Adobe Express, which is font recommendations, which like I have said, choosing the fonts is like not really my favorite. So you can go down here and see lots of recommended fonts. The other thing that's really nice is that it actually shows up like with the project in the background. So for anyone else who is not like super visual, um, it's a really nice way to see what it will actually look like in your project without like having to swap it out. There's also, I think these are called waves. I forget. I definitely learned the like official term for this, but you can see more like it. So if you want this font, but it's not quite right, you can go in and let's pick like this one or maybe this one. Um, Yeah. So that is a really fun way you can look for some more fonts if you aren't really sure what you want you can change the size right here you can type in your own or like go something else make it bigger make it smaller you can add shadows outlines all kinds of things um we can swap out this one too so we'll delete this and add our logo you can add your other logo so like let's add this little ghosty in which is fun. This is looking insane. Um, this is like a really chaotic project, but at least you can show off how to use all of the brand assets in one project. Uh, let's make this. This is not, no, 
absolutely not. Okay, that's fine. And then this is not related to personal brand, but just one of my favorite things. I really love how easy it is to remove the background and like just replace a photo with everything that is already happening. So like this photo has the background removed. It doesn't look like it actually has any other filters applied, but if it did, if you hit this replace button, it will replace all of those things without you having to manually add those back in. So let's go to my profile pics. We can add this one and it will just do it for me, which one of the first things I learned in Photoshop like 10 years ago was how to manually remove the background. It took me like hours and hours. And now the fact that Adobe Express has this um, that easy makes me crazy. I wish I had this years ago when I would remove the background of all of the all of my Etsy product photos and it would take me like literal days. Um, okay, so this is a half branded project. You know, you could go in and swap out all the rest of the checkers. You could also just like completely change the background to something else which maybe we'll do that. You can make it a solid color or let's see if there's something. I'm a big sucker for the stationary. Uh, if you follow me on social, this may look familiar because this is like the background I use all the time. Let's find something that's okay. We have this like mustard yellow in our brand. We can sort of do a version, let's add it as an image so that we can layer it right here on top of yeah. cool that is great i'm gonna delete this because it's hard to see now and pull this over here make it a little bigger um cool and change this to uh <laughs> jordan's first solo live stream Perfect. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, bring that. Uh, let's do this. Great. Okay, so now we have this project. Yeah, McCorn says, I remember the pen tool masking days. Oh boy. I remember taking hours on background removal. So happy it's faster and easier to do. Carrie, I cannot agree more. Um, it literally would have taken this entire stream for me to just, and honestly, with like my hair, I don't think I actually could have done it. Um, I never got good enough <laughs> to do like any sort of actual curly hair. Um, and the fact that Adobe Express can do it in one button is truly great. So here is our branded project. We can do a couple fun things with this. Now we can share this project. Like, you know, Katrina is taking over bootcamp on Thursday. I could invite her to this so she could make her own live stream template. I can add this version of it to the library the same way we did before. If I hit make a template, I can also download it as a PNG, JPEG or a PDF. But my favorite thing is that we can hit this schedule button. Something about content scheduler to note, if you are using this for personal brands and not for a business, there are, so right now content scheduler is syncing with Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. And you can sync um, as many of those, all of them, some of them. So with connections, you just go through and hit refresh. If it's about to expire, it'll give you a little notification so that you can sync it early. There is something to note though, if you don't have a brand or business and you don't have a business account, Instagram and Facebook do have like a separate I guess, category of profiles. And so you can only sync a business Instagram or Facebook. So you can't do a personal Facebook page with scheduler. You can't do a personal Instagram page there. In Facebook is kind of tricky um, because you have to make like a brand page. Instagram, I don't think like it's just a setting. Um, there isn't like 
a cost or anything. So you can just do that if you want. But if you don't want to set up any sort of brand or business socials, you can still use Twitter, Pinterest, and LinkedIn. There is no like differentiation there. So if you have just a personal Twitter, personal Pinterest, personal LinkedIn, you can still set those up and schedule them. I love this. Um, you can do unlimited days in the future. If you're on a free plan, I think at this moment you can try like two posts to test it out. If you're on a premium plan, there is no limit to the number of posts that you can do, which if anyone has used social schedulers before, that was like constant mental gymnastics for me of figuring out like which schedulers were worth paying for, how many posts I would actually do in a month. And then like figuring out if I could like which account I needed, which I guess version I needed to pay for to get the number of posts I needed. None of that here, which is really lovely. It works basically. I mean, Adobe Express, I think is really straightforward. So lots of it works exactly the way you think it would. You can use the time, you can choose the day, let's make it tomorrow because that is back in time. You can draft a post, which is if you don't want it to actually schedule, which I have started wisening up and doing that when I am streaming and demoing because otherwise I forget to delete them and my social is so chaotic with random demo posts. You can add a caption, which is my least favorite thing to do live um thinking about typing something so my caption will just be an emoji and it'll be this dinosaur one and then if you're syncing pinterest you can choose like the boards you want um the title and a destination link i'm gonna turn that off because i don't have any of that um ready to go and you can preview this which is great so you can see what it looks like on the different platforms we have Twitter is, um, we have Twitter here, LinkedIn here. I can go ahead and add Instagram and Facebook because I have all my business accounts synced. So you can see like if a design would be cut off on a certain platform, which depending on like the dimensions of your project, it may be. So this is just kind of nice to like see what it all looks like all together. And then you can hit schedule or you can hit draft and it opens to your entire calendar. So these are some posts that I've drafted in the past. I think we're gonna talk about scheduler more this week, but one of my favorite ways to use it is to put in drafts that are just like content prompts. So I wanted to do like a community spotlight. I wanted to do a new product feature behind the scenes to get ready with me real. And you can move these around to like whatever day so that's kind of nice, even if you're not using social media for your business, but you still want to have it like be cohesive or be a little more thought out. You could say like, okay, on Mondays, I want to like post a reel recapping my weekend or, you know, you know, you have an event that's coming up and you want to remember to post about it on social, which is one of the things that I am constantly like trying to remember um, to post important things that happen. You can leave these little reminders. One of the other things that is really fun is it's super easy to move them around. So like if you want these all to be on different days or you want them all to be later on in the week, it's that easy to move. Um, it will change, you know, the day in here as you move them around, which is great. You can duplicate them if you wanted to. That's more helpful for businesses probably if it's like, you know, hey, remember to shop our sale or remember that this new product is coming out because you can also duplicate a post and then like change the caption, which is nice to keep the same graphic. Um, and if you wanted to add a new post, not from a project, you can just go here to add new and you can add media either from your Adobe Express library. So like say, Say I wanted to show everyone like where I picked my new colors from. I can pull this project in and it will schedule for me, which is great. But you can also go from my device and upload from your computer too, from whatever device you're on. So I think that's loading. Yeah, there we go. I can add a new caption and 
that is going to, oh, I need to choose a channel. That is going to, because I haven't selected a public date, it would go into my unscheduled or published date, but I can just like make this tomorrow. Yeah, and it's here. So that is like a really broad overview of using Adobe Express and your brands. There are so many fun ways that we're gonna use this this week. So please join us for the rest of the week to talk more about using Adobe Express for your personal brand. And like, you can use all of this for a, a business too. Like everything we just did, you can absolutely use for an Etsy shop or if you're streaming on Twitch or if you have it, any kind of project that you want to brand or you want to make it a little bit easier for yourself. You can keep it all nice and organized in Adobe Express Brands. Um, and if you have any questions at all throughout the week or anytime, feel free to find me online. I am all over at Jordan Danae Ellis. So slide into my DMs, connect with me on LinkedIn, ask me any of your Adobe Express questions, and also check out the Adobe Express YouTube for tons of more um, in information and videos about how to use the platform. But hopefully I'll see you all tomorrow. Have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye.